So today we are going to be finishing the alternate future of the world season 2 series. It has been months since the previous episode released. I did do the recap, but this is the finale. This is episode 11, the last season 2 episode. We're going to be ending it here today and the series deserves an ending. It's been abused by me and uh, it really hasn't been treated very fair. But like I said, today it's ending. Make sure to go rewatch all the episodes or if you don't want to do that, watch the recap. It's a little bit shorter. It has a lot less detail in it, but it gives you the main gist of things. Also, this is most likely being premiered. So hello, future people. I'm in the past right now. It's currently August 19th and you're seeing this sometime in September. I likely just started one of my classes, I think English. Yeah, school, college, very fun. But if you guys do enjoy today's video, make sure to go leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you're new. And let's go ahead and jump straight into the finale. All right, so I'm not gonna give too much of a recap, but in the last episode, the Axis saw defeat from the Mediterranean Order and the Allies. Russia was also involved in that war as well as the League of Freedom. And the Axis of Asian countries also saw victory in a smaller way. They took some land from the Mediterranean Order. But a lot of Europe has been released, like Poland and Czechoslovakia, and the world is looking pretty peaceful and one-sided right now with the League of Freedom having the big advantage as well as the Allies. Germany has been greatly defeated and countries surrounding it will quickly join the League of Freedom in hopes of being protected from any German aggression in the future. Hungary and Serbia will follow suit and Angola will join. So the League of Freedom is spreading across the world and at this point it's basically like the UN except it's a defensive alliance and is made up of a lot of countries who are fairly weak but enjoy the protection of countries like the United States, Brazil, all those guys. And as time progresses, there really won't be that many wars in the world. There will be a small skirmish in Spain in which the central Spanish government wins and what the hell? Oh my god. Um, and unites the country for the first time in a while. These guys will then join the League of Freedom, and you can tell this thing is going to start to spread like wildfire. It's been a few more years, and there still hasn't been that many wars. The world has completely rebuilt from World War II, but something bad happens in Germany. Their leader is assassinated. And following the assassination of their leader, multiple other high-ranking government officials are also killed off. We're talking governors of provinces, rulers of regions, even down to local governments within towns. It is a massive mass execution event and nobody knows who's behind it. The remainder of the German government will attempt to figure out who did it, but unfortunately for them, they are too busy dealing with the internal issues that are coming with the death of so many government officials. And that includes a huge civil war amongst all the different groups that have been conquered by the Germans. So we have the Poles, the Czechians, the Danes, the Dutch, and then a separatist government in Germany that is done with the whole German government in their fascist ways. Some countries are gonna join in on this opportunity to take back their rightful land. So Poland joins in, we also see Czechoslovakia join in, and even the little old Netherlands. So obviously the Germans are not going to be able to keep up with this war. They have no government leadership and anyone who tries to step into power is mysteriously killed off, becomes a danger zone, and eventually the German government will capitulate and the country will collapse. The world is baffled about what just happened in the German state and accusations begin to be made against each other. The axis of Asian countries largely blames the Allies, where the Mediterranean order is blaming them. The Allies come out and say that it was an inside job where the League of Freedom it simply just stays neutral. But what do we do with the empty German state? Well, the world is going to divide it up. And I do want to say just real quick, one of the main reasons that this finale is able to happen is because of two people. I want to give a shout out to Connor the Gamer and Geo Daniel for redrawing this map of the alternate future season two. If you remember, I had lost the map for this series and it prevented me from making any more episodes. And that kind of is the reason it died and ended. But those bad lads went out and they drew up a map that is pretty much identical to the end of episode 10. So everybody, make sure that if you see them say thank you because otherwise we would not be sitting here today i probably would never have the motivation to redraw that map so thank you connor and thank you geo daniel but let's divide up this german state and in this treaty here germany is divided up immensely first of all they split into three main countries southern germany slash bavaria over here we have west germany and then we have east germany denmark is released and they get a little bit more land and then we have these three states of the netherlands czechia and Poland. These areas will be given back to their main countries, and the map now looks like this. Poland, for some reason, looks like extremely long. I, I don't know what's happening there. Anyway, these new German states will make decisions. Two of them will join the League of Freedom, Denmark as well, and then the one staying out is going to be East Germany. I want you guys to take a look at this map and make an observation. Did you say that there's only one great country left? Good job! Sweden is the only member of the Axis, and if you're the only member of an alliance, are you really in an alliance? So Sweden will leave the Axis, marking the end of an era as the Axis from World War II 
no longer exist anywhere in the world. Of course, Sweden's government is still a little bit, uh, you know, fishy, but at least they aren't in the access, so the world is celebrating that. And more and more countries are joining in on the League of Freedom. Even countries like South Africa, the two countries of India, and Vietnam join the League of Freedom. Eventually, Sudan will join as well, and the entire African continent is a part of an alliance. Next up, we have a huge event, the merging of two alliances. The Allies will dissolve, and they will officially join the League of Freedom. Now, most of the members of the Allies were already in the League of Freedom, so it isn't necessarily too bizarre for this to occur, but the map is looking very purple. There's three alliances left, the Axis of Asian countries, the Mediterranean Order, and of course, the East Asian Alliance. These guys will gain two members, actually three, whereas the rest of these countries here will join the League of Freedom. And now we're left with only a select few countries that are not involved in the alliance, but the world is definitely trending towards one that is full of unity and peace. Greenland and Ireland join up, and even Finland joins, which is kind of remarkable considering how close they were with Germany not too long ago at all. Over time, even Sweden's government will reform, and they will join the League of Freedom as well as East Germany. And now we're left with the Russians and the Soviets. The Russians join and over the next couple of years there is a huge holdout with these remaining five asian eh, actually that's four asian countries korea japan siberia and so yeah so four the rest of the world is full of unity and everyone is working together but something bad is brewing within the access of asian countries but the league of freedom is unaware they simply just aren't worried about it they are too busy kind of cooperating and working on themselves trying to manage this huge alliance. Over time, we see Korea and Siberia join the East Asian Alliance. And Japan, after going through a lot of different leadership changes, will join the League of Freedom. And then finally, the Soviet Union will choose a side, being the Axis of Asian countries. So every single country in the world is now a part of an alliance. Neutrality is a dead theory, and uh, just for kind of a scope on relations, the Mediterranean Order does not view the red team too favorably, but they do view the purple team favorably. They just really aren't a fan of their global reach. And the same can be said about the orange team. They don't have a high favorability of the red team. And uh, they do have a little bit more of a positive one for the purple team. But once again, they don't like their global reach. So time will zoom on and it will be a couple of decades. But finally, someone notices what's happening in the red team. Their technology is complete. This is technology that has never been seen before, not even by the Swiss, who are from Alternate Future Season 1. The orange team is the first to notice and they will notify the League of Freedom and Mediterranean Order, but unfortunately for them, it's too late. 20 different unidentified flying objects will be launched from Iran and they will all hit their targets as they move close to the speed of light. And all of a sudden, there are multiple bright white explosions across the world map. And the populations of these areas are completely vaporized and any trace of human civilization is erased. Once again, this is technology that even Switzerland didn't have. So where did the red team get this technology from? Well, a few decades ago, a meteor hit the ground in the Azov Republic. It was written down as just a normal meteor impact, although it did destroy a city, but that was that. The government just said that it was a meteor from outer space. It hit Earth. I mean, there's nothing else to it, right? Wrong. It turns out that outside of Earth's view, a portal had opened up and this meteor came out of it and struck the ground. Within that meteor was a race of humans, which was unknown to this world. Their technology far superior to that of anything seen in this world. It was 100 times more advanced than that of Switzerland's. This new race was able to cloak themselves among the Republic of Azov and eventually made their way over to the red team. And in Iran, they presented themselves as a group of people that deferred from the allies and was there to sell equipment and weapons to the red team. The red team, not thinking too much of it, accepted these guys' request and they bought these weapons of mass destruction off of these people and they didn't know better they thought that this was just technology that the allies had they didn't know they had it and obviously these guys are associated with the allies i mean they speak the same language they look the same they sound the same they have the same accent these guys are from the allies so we can trust them right no they were blinded by the greed of having superior technology over the allies and without really thinking too much of it once the time was right they launched 20 of these weapons and uh well they atomized half the world. Now, what did these weapons do? Well, they simply erased any trace of human activity. So humans were gone. Plant life, all that stuff still remained, animals remained, but any cities, towns, anything that was man-made is gone. It essentially reverted the world back to a primal state. And once the red team realized that these weapons were not nuclear, but in fact, some kind of space tech that didn't make any sense, it was too late. The outer civilization launched an attack on planet Earth. And soon, 
bombs that were even larger than these ones start to cover the continents of the world, and eventually almost all traces of human life and man-made activity are erased. And the last place to go will be Greenland, but right before this thing is blown up, we see a green bay... Green Bay Packers? But right before this thing is blown up, we see a green beam of light launch itself into outer space, far away from Earth. The outside civilization notices this, but thinks nothing much of it, and Greenland is wiped off the map. And after the smoke clears, we see that there is no trace of humans left. No man-made objects, no cities, buildings, anything like that. All the technology is gone. This is as plain as the Earth can get pre-human. And from here, we see a spaceship come out of that portal, and they make their way down to the newly decimated Earth and make a landing right here on this peninsula. People leave the ship and begin to explore the area around, but not until another portal opens, and out of that portal comes yet another ship. This ship goes right down here and lands right next to the foreign ship, and off of this brand new ship comes the two Swiss scientists led by a team of elite soldiers. That beam of light that we saw from Greenland right before it was blown up were the two Swiss scientists going back into the time machine and going super far into the future. And they now come back with armed soldiers to this exact moment following the eradication of humanity from this earth. They confront the people in the first ship and it is revealed that the people who were on this ship are from alternate future of the world season one. One claims to be the leader of the Swiss empire. An empire that rules over very many planets in a solar system. And within the next minute, bodies start to hit the ground. These two groups start to fire on each other, and after the dust clears, there is only one survivor. And that one survivor is one of the Swiss scientists. Although there is one slight issue, and he is mortally wounded. He now stands tall on his earth, which he escaped to following the end of season one, in hopes of fixing the future and preventing war from plaguing the world. And their plan it came to fruition. The League of Freedom created a system in which countries would not go to war anymore, but instead would sit down and negotiate. Of course, there is still one major issue, the access of Asian countries. And the foreign invaders from season one took advantage of that. They know that if they had just entered into this country's atmosphere and blown it up, they would have been detected, which maybe would have given some time for retaliation. They weren't really aware of the technology of this universe, this universe being season two. So they wanted to be careful. They first sent down that meteor, infiltrated the AOAC, and used them to blow up the world. They then came in, finished the job. But it's revealed that that leader really just wanted a new home. In season one, Earth was destroyed. After fleeing to the stars and making a pretty impressive empire, it began to crumble and the people wanted a new home. They wanted to go back to the home. When humanity left to Earth in season one, Earth was kind of symbolized as kind of like a god. People worshiped it, they wished for it to return, and eventually enough was enough. They wanted to come back, but they couldn't go back to the original Earth. And they knew that the Swiss country from season one had broken the timeline. They created two timelines. Essentially what we have here is our normal timeline. This is season one, right? We have the ending right here, but right before the ending, the Swiss abandoned the world and created a new timeline of which a futuristic Switzerland placed itself on the world map. This broke the timeline and these two parallels continued on. And remember, Earth is destroyed in this one, but this one, it is fine, just in a past state. So the timeline from season one went right to season two, and this is where we are right now. After successfully defending the world from the future invaders, he goes over to their ship. From here, he goes into the terminal and activates a machine. This machine completely seals this universe off from the original one. Essentially, what we have happening here is a barrier being created, which prevents these guys from going back over here, ever. Now, why was that technology on the future invaders' ship? Well, they wanted to seal themselves from the original universe. You know, the Swiss Empire, although strong, was not very light, and it was likely going to see a coalition invade it. So they went home, and after being defeated, the Swiss man used their technology, and like I said, this place is now sealed from that other universe. He then walks back to his own ship, and then gathers a group of people who all come out of the ship. And these people are the ancestors of those that fled America at the end of season one. The Swiss scientist tells them that this is their new home and they no longer have to hide from the original universe. They are safe and they are free here. His wounds do start getting the best of him though and his vision begins to fade. Quickly, he pulls a device out of his pocket and shoots it towards the people. This device will erase their memories and pretty much set them back to the default setting, which I guess is primitive humanity. The Swiss man then blows up the mothership of the foreign invaders, hops into his ship, and flies it out to sea. He crashes it right here in the Indian Ocean. He gets out and sits at the top, staring at the sunset. Three minutes later, the scientist slumps over 
and he is dead. The ship will eventually sink into the bottom of the ocean, and humanity will begin to rise once more. This civilization continues to grow, staying on the coast of the Arabian Peninsula and wrapping around to the modern day UAE. And as civilization advances, they begin to mirror what they once were in the original timeline. War still plagues them. Humanity is bounded to war. The humans here will continue to expand their civilizations, eventually encompassing the entire world map. World wars will follow, colonization will happen, and the rest? Well, you've already seen it. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this finale. It might have been a little bit confusing, and I do want to say, before I get the comment saying what just happened, there originally was going to be an actual animated movie about this ending. Issue is, it fell through, I lost the animator, I can't animate myself, so I just kind of give up on it. And the whole ending sequence, it might have been confusing to you, but the script is pretty, uh, it's a lot more in-depth and detailed of what just happened. But I will attempt to edit this video as best as I can to make this as easy to understand as possible. So I hope it wasn't too big of an issue. I hope you guys understand that Alternate Future Season 1 attacked Alternate Future Season 2 because of Switzerland time traveling that created a new timeline. And Timeline 1 wanted the world of Timeline 2 since Earth in Timeline 1 was destroyed. The two Swiss scientists, which fled the world in Season 1, are now dead. One dying in battle and one dying of his wounds, but they offered new life to a group of people who were being tormented by the Galactic Empire that fled into space following season one. And that's going to do it. So thank you guys so much for your support on this series. Uh, it hasn't been great, but thank you guys for sticking around and believing in me and finishing this because I didn't believe in myself. I didn't think there was ever going to be an end. But here I am sitting here on August 19th at two in the morning, finishing this series once and for all. There will be a movie released in the next coming weeks. And yeah, that does it for alternate future of the world. Is there going to be a season three? Probably not. Right now we're riding high on the Civilization series and that series is doing amazing. So we're probably going to continue with that for as long as we can. And once that ends, we might do a season two of that or who knows, by then we might have another mapping series up and running. But once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. And of course, thank you to all our super fans. This includes Georgie Badev, Deathstrider X, Aaron Tyne, Hammer Toad 45, Connor the Gamer, Poland Country Ball, Nevada Garbage Trucks, and DW Cool Dude. Once again, thank you guys.